I can't remember the exact video, guys. And I'm not going to go through my, all my viewing history to find it. But somebody made a comment that I really liked on a, uh, on a video that I watched recently. And what he said was, you only make X amount of money in your life. And he's right. It's not predetermined, obviously. I mean, you know, you can change things up at any point. For the better or the worse. But the fact remains that when all is said and done, when the book of your life is written, and you've moved on, you will have made X amount of dollars. So given that there's a limited amount of money that you're going to make, and that number is bigger for some than others, why would you, for lack of a better word, piss away money on things that add no value to your life, add no value to your personal wealth, um, and don't give you any enjoyment? Think about that. You're only going to make X amount of dollars. I'd like this video uh, to be about frugality, about being frugal. And, uh, you know, okay, you know, some people may say this is cheap. Okay, I get it. Those words don't hurt me. I want to show you something that, you know, I, I'm kind of learning this as I go. Because I've never really been considered a frugal person. Up until the last couple of years when I've uh, been, been really focused on buying silver. It was funny because if I wanted something, cost was no object. If I needed something, well, you know, I'd, I'd take a hard look at it, right? I'd go out and buy a big screen TV at the drop of a hat because I wanted a nice TV. But I would uh, push my socks, you know, they'd have holes in them. I'd push them to the limits. You know, my sneakers, stuff like that. Uh, maybe even, like, tires on my car. I would uh, wait to the absolute, uh, you know, I'd push them to the limits. But what about credit card interest? Guys, any money that you're spending on credit card interest is just being flushed down the toilet. You know, I've, 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 I've driven it home many times. I have the banks working for me now. You know, I, I use their money as a tool and I don't pay a single dime in interest on it. I go into great, greater detail on my uh, Dave Ramsey versus an aggressive credit card strategy video, but I literally have them working for me. You know, my mortgage is basically, uh, you know, I've got 11 years on it and it's a, a microscopic interest rate at this point. So uh, basically I'm, I'm getting pretty much a free ride now, for the most part. There's no such thing as a free ride, but. Yeah, you're only gonna make X amount of dollars. So what I would like to hear from you guys is tips on how, you, how you're frugal in your life. I'm going to show you one quick example that I, I just kind of figured out. I know, it's not groundbreaking. And it's uh, barely a savings, but I, I just want to go over it with you. I mean, you know, my wife is basically on the same page. She'll be the person that on December 26th goes to the store and buys wrapping paper and ribbons for Christmas the day after for 75% off. She buys the stuff for pennies on the dollar. And, you know, you don't realize that savings until the next year when everybody's rushing out to pay full price wrapping paper. We basically have it all that we need. You know, that's kind of the, some of the stuff that we're doing now. So this box, what's in it? This is the, uh, the box that my kilo was shipped in. Okay. And as I'm going through, understand guys, at some point I'm going to be selling some silver on eBay. Anytime I can capture a semi-numismatic or better bullion home run, if you will, Right, like uh, I think if you bought in 2010 the Lunar Series Tigers, you know they're going for about 80 bucks now. I think you can consider that a home run, considering that you paid about 20 dollars for them. And the fact that just a mere three years later you can take one coin and turn it into four ounces of silver, I'd say that's pretty damn good. Okay, so let's say my Lunar Dragons take off at some point. Will they? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. You know, I'm sure that something that I've been buying since I've been carpet bombing silver and buying all kinds of different types, something is gonna is gonna um, really pay off in a big way from a collector's standpoint. So what happens when I go to sell on eBay? Well, I'll make my sale, and then I'll have to go down to Staples and, and buy some bubble wrap. I'll uh, 
I'll buy you know a padded envelope and and just some n nice shipping supplies to make sure that uh, I, I ship it out you know neatly. And it'll cost me a little bit of money and everything else. Well, it occurred to me as I'm unboxing my kilo. You know, I got this nice uh, nice blanket that they sent me. I've got this bubble wrap that they sent me. I've got this other bubble wrap that's more like an envelope. And I got these padded envelopes. Why would I just throw this stuff away? You know, the old me would have. I can I can pretty much tell you that. This stuff would have ended up in the garbage. That's not that's no longer the case. I'm gonna be saving this stuff. Why end up spending money on something that I know I'll need in the future when I have it now? I'm going to be taking a look at this stuff and saying, before I throw something out, does it have value? If not to me, to somebody else. And I'll be looking to, uh, to cash in on that value. I realize, guys, this is really small potatoes. And I know, I know a lot of you are going to be like, really? I'm not even going to bother with that. And that's perfectly fine. This is just uh, basically me trying to reconfigure how I look at this stuff and how I and some of my financial behaviors okay um, you know kind of a waste not want not um, kind of kind of thing but I know at some point I'll be buying some packing supplies so why would I be throwing this stuff out you know and don't worry you're not gonna be seeing me on the Vermont edition of hoarders okay this is gonna be a single box and I'm, I'm sure I'll, maybe I'll have another one that's, that's kind of stored away in my closet okay it will be out of sight completely it's not like I'm cl cluttering up my house um, but what I'd like to hear from you guys is, you know, tips on and on how you're frugal in your life, and maybe somebody can benefit from it. You know, uh, I've always been very loyal with my business, very loyal. And the thought was always, if I show a, a business this loyalty, and I show them that I'm a good customer, then they'll respond in kind, and I'll benefit financially, and, and it, it'll be a, you know, it, it'll be a symbiotic relationship between the two of us. We'll both benefit. So I had my, uh, my car insurance company. I had the same auto insurance um, broker for 25 years. 25 years with the same place. Do you know what I was rewarded with last year? A rate increase. So I shopped around and uh, I found I saved about $250 last year by switching to Geico. I mean seriously, I, I, I switched to Geico. and. Uh, you know, this isn't a Geico commercial, I'm just telling you, I saved money by, by switching over to them. And I realized that they were basically, my old um, insurance broker was basically capitalizing on my complacency by not holding their feet to the fire, by not going out there and, uh, and, and shopping around and getting the best price. So you know what, 250 bucks in a year is quite a bit of money and that's quite a bit of silver. So, you know, one of the, the, my next video is going to be, because everybody keeps asking me this question, how do you stack so hard on your income? Well, stuff like this, guys. You know? I mean, I, I know it sounds silly, but, uh, and, and I'll discuss further in my next video. I'm actually going to be putting it together right now. But, yeah, share, share tips on, on how you're frugal and, and how you benefit from it. Um, I'm sure a lot of people can really benefit from some pretty good tips.